Welcome back to the Mailin Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Shivery, coming to you live from the Lodge in Austin, Texas. Joining me is my co-host, Sally DeFries. What's up, Sal? How we doing? I'm pretty tired. Got in a Peloton before this. Uh, with this little ball of energy named Olivia that I thought was going to be really easy. It turns out she's really hard. Okay. All my Peloton peeps probably know. I'm a Cody Rigsby girl through and through. How many instructors are there? I don't know, a ton. I take from like probably three or four, like rotating. My favorite guy is this like really flamboyant guy named Cody. He's got jokes. Uh, I also like Alex Toussaint. And I like Emma Lovewell and Allie Love. But I started Olivia because I was like, she looks cute. This is probably going to be a pretty easy class. It was an Ellie Golding ride. Who was Kicked Will using when he listened to uh, Selena? Bitty, bitty, I don't bomb, know. Bomb. I don't know whose ride that was. <laughs> that was funny. I Actually, I can probably check it on the app and see who he used. You know, he does the psychopath move of just writing to a black screen. Like, he doesn't do anything anymore. Oh, really? Which is psychotic. I but, find it interesting that these Peloton instructors are basically like many celebs at this point. Oh, for sure. so many people know who they are. They're the well, new podcast host. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are, though. They're famous. Yeah. Because... They have huge followings on Instagram and, and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty funny. Oh, he did a, sense. a Kindle tool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, shouts to Kindle. Yeah. Selena ride. Nice. Love, love me some Selena. R.I.P., though. Unfortunate. R.I.P. Really. Yeah. Corpus Christi. Texas, David. Have you, you know? seen the J Lo? Oh yeah, Selena Dave. Movie? We got Dave here. Of course I have. What's up, Dave? It's a classic. Of course I have, and now I get to give a shout out to Selena Gomez, pride of Grand Prairie, Texas, home yes. of the Gophers. Another Texan. The and the Warriors. she's named after Selena. Is she? Mm -hmm. I believe that's right. Yeah. I think so. Selena. Other fun fact about Selena Gomez: she was on Barney. Remember that? Oh yeah, I do With know Demi that. With Demi Lovato. I do know that. I didn't know Demi. I didn't was know a Demi part of that. Was. That's why they were friends. Are really they still like, friends? Are they beef? Well, how's I don't know. Work? I don't really know what's going on. The Mickey like Mouse Club has seen just a crazy number of well, young, to, to be clear, people go they were uh, Barney, but also Mickey Mouse Club. You got your Very JT, different. your Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Christina Aguilera. some other people. Uh, I think Ryan Gosling was in it. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Jeez. And then you've got the other subset of celebrities who were on shows first, and that is, uh, what's the briefcase thing? Uh, the deal, deal or no deal. Oh, deal or no deal. Meghan Markle, Chrissy Teigen. Man. I did not really? know that about Chrissy Teigen. Yeah. Meghan Markle too? Yeah, that was the thing about Meghan Markle. It was like she was a deal or no deal girl. And now she's like a princess. The, whoever wow. Whoever scouted for the, the girls for that, they, they, did, a they good, did a good job. <laughs> they did a good job. <laughs> they had a binder full of women. Yeah, they certainly I did. don't know if any other famous people came in that show, but I remember when Meghan Markle and Her Prince Harry married and they were like, interviewing like random girls who used to be on the show who are like now 40 and have kids and they're like and sarah used to stand next to megan she's like she seemed really sweet i knew one day she'd be royalty you're like did you no oh, shut up she just put no, up that line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah man sorry weird tangent <laughs> anyway uh dave welcome to the podcast what's up with it so glad you're here with us today good happy to be here wearing your lucas shirt shout to the mavs Happy Luca Day. Okay. Thank you. To all of you. Thank you. Uh, before we get into it today, we have a hotline number. It is 888-362-MAIL. That's M-A-I-L, 888-362-6245. You can also write in if you would prefer. We have a link in our Twitter Twitter bio at Mailin Podcast. We have, I believe, seven questions today, three of which are voicemails. Uh, Dave, if you're ready, let's just jump right into number one. Hey, y'all. I am a 25-year-old male. And moving out of the house I've spent the last three years in with my roommates. The person I was going to live with fell through and it looks like now my best option is moving in with a friend who is a female I've known for a few years. We are both single but have had small amounts of sexual tension between us in the past, although that was a long time ago. Is this a risky move and do you have any advice to make this work as well as possible? We get along well and have similar ideals in what makes a good roommate. Love to hear your thoughts. Uh, this can work, but you're playing with you're playing with fire here, and it, it can also go south. I mean, chances of a hookup are pretty high, and not that there's anything terrible about hooking up with your roommate, but um, it could lead to stuff. It could lead to feelings and 
hurt feelings jealousy. and and jealousy and yeah and if you're going to bring someone back to the to the apartment she's going to be there and if she brings a guy back he's going to be there or you're going to be there when he's there um jealousy could absolutely creep in um i don't know sally what do you think i actually don't hate this weirdly <laughs> i don't know i i think the bigger deal that you're gonna have like the things that you're gonna have to deal with aren't gonna be your relationship so much although i think that there if there's been sexual tension in the past i would just make sure that like one of you doesn't have feelings for the other before you move in but dylan's right like the likelihood of y'all hooking up is pretty high in my it's 90 opinion. 90 percent plus actually we have a friend who did this moved in with a girl and then like immediately hooked up with her and then they dated and then when they broke up he had to move out because it was pretty awkward yeah um I don't I don't think there's any problem with a guy and a girl living together. This is this is what I'll say. Any girl that this guy dates is gonna be like, Why do you have a girl roommate? And unfortunately it's twenty twenty. Like we should be past True. that. Like we should be able to like let guys and girls be friends. But that um those stereotypes and like um I don't know the word I'm looking for, but that's all ingrained in us. And so as a twenty five year old, I feel like if you're trying to start up a serious relationship with somebody or like bring a girl home that you aren't just going to hook up with, she may start wondering like, why is he living with the girl? Like, why are they yeah. best friends? And what? let's, let's say you do hook up. Let's say a month into you living together, you do hook up, but it's like totally platonic. You're friends. There's no feelings involved. Okay. Got it. But when you do start dating someone, like you said, they're going to have questions. All right. Okay. So you live with a girl. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys ever hooked up? Mm -hmm. And then you got to say yes. Right. Unless you're just going to lie, which we, we don't, we don't recommend you do, but um, you got to say yes, and then it's just going to be tough to explain the dynamic there. And there's always the, like, I don't think this is a bad idea, but I think you need to set some ground rules first. Just be like, hey, uh, I mean, you're living with somebody, like, the chances of seeing them naked are pretty high. So I would just be like, hey, let's uh, make sure, like, here's the ground rules. Yeah. You have someone over, that's fine. Just like text me so that I don't like bust in on you, which you would do with any other roommate, but it just complicates the situation having like, say she's has a guy over and then you walk in, the guy's like, oh shit, am I like yeah. the mistress in this situation? So I think ground rules are important. I think even saying like, I don't think you have to confront the like elephant in the room of like, we have sexual tension. There's a chance we might hook up because maybe you won't. But if it ever happens, then you really need to be like, we got to nip this in the bud right now. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with doing this, living right. with someone of the opposite sex. You just need to know what you're getting yourself into before you actually sign that lease. My little brother is about to live with a girl. They have a house that has four bedrooms and one of the roommates moved out. So there's three guys and a girl is going to move in with them. But she is engaged to like one yeah. of their friends and so like basically they're not moving in the the couple is not moving in together until they get married and to me that's not as potentially problematic because it's like one guy more, exactly. and one girl because it's, it's like oh it's just a big roommate situation and they're they must be friends it's not like you know you have just two people on harry's going to be in a new girl situation they've got one girl three guys but you're right like one and one right get a little dicey right feels a little relationshipy but I don't think it's a bad idea. I still think that he should do it, especially if she's the best candidate. It's but not just, a bad idea. Just beware of the potential And be honest with here. each other. If you start to catch feelings or you hook up yeah. and then you need to talk about it. Man. This is one like time where you can't be awkward and just completely sweep it to the side. Like You have to address it right then if there's a hookup and then be like, we got to move on. Or let it keep happening and then start dating. So. Yeah. And then if you start dating... It's fine, but uh, you know, if, if if things don't work out, then you have the awkward. Now, what do we do about the living situation? We've and had you plenty of those people. Six months to go on your lease, and you're both committed to it, and you've broken up. Well, with that, oh, we've had a ton of questions like that. And with COVID, it's weird, difficult. Makes sure. it even more uncertain. Sure. Um, I'm gonna hit you with some facts, Dylan. Men's diets—they're falling behind. Uh huh. And I'm not looking at you, but I just want you to listen up. You, you are looking at me. Over 70% of men don't get enough vitamin E, and up to 97% of men don't get enough vitamin D from the diet. That's where ritual comes in, okay? They're introducing the essential for men, the obsessively researched multivitamin that's formulated to help fill nutritional gaps in men's diets. We've been taking these for a while now. I love it. 
it smells good. It's got the minty smell and Ooh, like yeah. there's the taste. You know, it, it it's easy on the palate. A lot of yeah. multivitamins aren't. Yeah. Um, it's good stuff. It's the new kind of two a day from helping support heart health, normal muscle function, and normal immune function. Back to the scent. Before I I actually take the vitamins, mm -hmm. I just put my nose in there and take a big old inhale. You it's should. Awesome. It like it like wakes me up. It smells so good. Ritual always delivers. The subscription based supplement is easy to start. Excuse me, easy to start and easy to snooze. It's only about a dollar a day to have essential nutrients delivered to your door. That makes it easy because it's, you know, like they said, it's easy to forget some of these things. Vitamin E, vitamin D. You want your immune system and your body to be working like at full strength. Absolutely. That's why you got to fill in the gaps with ritual. And right now you can step up your nutrient game with the essential for men by going to ritual.com slash Randy, which will get you 10% off. Your first three months when you visit, excuse me, visit ritual.com slash Randy to start the ritual today. That's 10% off during your first three months. Ritual.com slash Randy. Thanks, Dave. Let's do the next one. Hey, Kings and Queen. Wedding slash COVID question. Our wedding is in December. Backstory. In South Florida, about 180 guests. As of right now, we are still going full force with all details and plans is this a trash move we have a small contingency plan in play to reel it reel it in but obviously we want to go big we're now four months out so it's getting kind of real and we don't want to be those assholes that are having a wedding in the middle of all this we're getting married on this day regardless even if it's just five people and we've been engaged for four years and don't want to wait thanks guys that is a long engagement that really that's jumped that's out a of pam and roy type situation yeah <laughs> that's immediately what i thought of by the way, there's a PS here. It says, thanks, Sally, for telling my fiance happy birthday. I don't know if you remember this, but. I do, actually. Yeah. Thank you from, from this You're person. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, Dave. Oh, sorry. Wow. My it, bad. It blended in with the next one. Give me the it's, kudos. <laughs> okay, so it's. Okay, it's in December. We're currently in August. mid to late August. You have time. Um, look, schools are opening back up. Like, you take your actually take your kid to school mm -hmm. um i believe here for parks he'll be, he'll be able to go in i think in october yeah um i think this is fine i know florida is kind of a hot zone for this so that that's the only thing that makes me not be like totally comfortable in my response here but it's december i mean we'll know a lot plus you have a contingency plan we'll know a lot more in in three and even two months about about how much longer this thing is going to last um, I would feel comfortable with, with this. I would feel comfortable with a plan a going forward with 180 people guests and have, but have some rules in place like mask distancing type situation, but a contingency plan is a very smart thing. If things are bad or even worse by then, um, scale it back and just do close family and maybe even like your, your bridal party or your wedding party, I should say, I don't know. What do you think, Sally? I kind of go back on all this COVID stuff all the time, back and forth. I, again, feel like, and I said this last week, like, whatever your comfort level is, is what you should do. So if this is what you're comfortable with, great, do it. And your guests will do the same thing. So, again, we're in the middle of a pandemic. If you have people cancel because of COVID, you can't really be upset about that. Um, I don't know that I would attend a 180-person wedding the next year or you know that's my own personal what i would do but i'm not saying you shouldn't do it unfortunately the people who are getting married in the middle of this pandemic have some really shitty choices to make because most likely she's already probably sunk tons of money into uh this wedding and that's a totally valid thing like if you're planning a wedding and you've sunk all this money into it having to cancel because of all this sucks and most likely you're not going to get money back so okay, it's been a while since i've done the whole wedding planning thing so is this stuff typically not refundable and if if it's not refundable is there like most vendors COVID will not terms different or what no so our all of our stuff and we didn't thankfully sign that many contracts we decided to cancel before we had really gone through with a lot of stuff but we have uh, several friends going through this right now um most of the things you put a deposit for like half down, right? Okay. And, that's and not then, refundable. and it's usually non-refundable unless they have like, most of them have act of God clauses. So like a hurricane or 
something like that, a COVID, a pandemic, you know, a bombing, like something crazy happening. Force majeure. Yes, exactly. Lawyer, lawyer Dave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say like, if this happens, we're not liable, whatever, which is why a lot of people get wedding insurance because most of the time wedding insurance will cover acts of God. But everyone got wedding insurance and then COVID happened. Now they're all trying to make claims. Guess who can't pay? The wedding insurance companies. Oh, no. So that's the whole thing. Like the finances, I totally understand. The people, I I also get like, you. it's your wedding. You should do whatever you want to do. If you want to have a giant wedding, great. You just have to be very cognizant of the fact that it's happening in the middle of a global pandemic. And like you said, it's December, so it's four months away. Maybe it'll be better. But there's also a chance it could be way worse. Right. The flu season's happening. We could be having a second wave. You have no idea. And now is the great time to just be very honest with all your guests. You're not going to seem wishy-washy for saying, like updating them, you know, however long into the wedding right now when you send out save the dates or whatever, just be like, hey, this is still happening given that everything's still open and we're, you know, we're still safe. We're taking all these precautions. And then leading up to the wedding, maybe November, December, like make sure that your guests feel comfortable. So give them options. Like here's what we're doing for safety. Here's what, you know, like you can do to keep yourself safe. Um, you know, if you, if you decide last minute you don't want to come, let me know. That's totally fine. Just be really open with your guests because you want them to feel like they're in a safe environment too. Like the wedding should be about you, but it also you're throwing a party. So you just need to make sure that everyone there feels comfortable. I actually, I don't know if I said this before, my friend attended a wedding in Tahoe where they had wristbands that were like, red was don't talk to me or like stay what? six feet away. <laughs> Yellow was like, I'm cautious, but don't hug me. And then green was like, I don't give a shit do whatever Are you kidding and so you you wore a wristband based on like your level of comfort of interacting with people if you're That's wearing the red crazy. you probably just should have stayed home. yeah the red yeah. i'm like i think the red a couple people at the wedding was like a pregnant sister or something you know like <laughs> don't come up to me that's funny just or like a... interact with me while wearing a mask and then my friend wore a yellow but she was like i got as i got drunk it just became green isn't essentially. there like a, <laughs> so uh, a theme uh, like a, a young person that's a stoplight party. party stoplight party that's right it's like you're single, Red. you wear green. Yeah, yellow is... You're kind of talking to someone, it's yellow or whatever. Also weird if you wear yellow and like... The person that you're kind of talking like, to is like wearing green. They show up in red. Like, oh, I thought we, I thought we were. Uh, I thought we were doing exclusive. This. And like, what's the point if you go in red? Funny. Like, no one's going to talk to you besides your significant other, other people. Right. In, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I just think I personally probably wouldn't, but it's your wedding. You've obviously been looking for it forward to it for four years i feel like i've gotten comments from people in the past on my comments on covid on this like not going to bars things like that i'm going to reiterate this again do what is comfortable for you and like what's comfortable for your friends and family yeah as as this time moves on this covid thing it's not like we're in april where like everyone needed to be locked down because that was what the country and state ruled us to do well not the country but now it's like you really got to fend for yourself and decide how you want to interact with people and do things. So that's your decision. I don't know. I think that's well said. That's that's all. You I got a say. lot of time between now and December. Yeah, a lot right. of time between now and then. Hopefully and the, it works out. The contingency plan that they have in place, I think, is a very smart thing. Right. Yeah. And as long as you're um, really like pragmatic about the whole thing and you realize like there's a chance that this could go to shit and it's only gonna be my family there cool but just like it's really hard when you're planning a wedding to not expect everything to be perfect and i really commend all the people who are getting married during this time because i feel like i was like kind of a bridezilla the day of because i just was like so panicked about everyone else i can't imagine having to deal with COVID on top of it like i would have been losing my mind it's unfortunate yeah yeah i feel, I feel bad for all the people who are doing stuff like this during the, the yeah. pandemic it sucks but we're all dealing with it in one way or another so we're in it together exactly. let's do a voicemail dave let's do a voicemail hey mailing crew just got back from the airport from visiting my parents and it had me wondering what's your go-to quick snack or meal while you're in the airport for me it's definitely an auntie Anne's pretzel or garrett's popcorn if i'm lucky enough to have that in the airport where I am. Thanks a lot. Bye. 
Go to airport snack. Anybody hitting that Cinnabon? Absolutely Do they have not. Cinnabons in airports? <laughs> I know that they have yeah. Auntie Anne's. Austin doesn't. Right? I, isn't Austin like one of the Auntie more, Anne's. Isn't that like one of the more common I always think places? Cinnabon with the mall. Yeah, exactly. But it could be, oh. it could be Auntie Anne's too. smells like a Cinnabon, though. Like, it's very buttery It's and possible sweet. I'm confusing the two, but I'm pretty sure Cinnabon is just in airports all over the country. I'm going to answer this first. Here's what I feel like. On the way to a trip... Most of the time, I've been, like, really good because I'm trying to, like, be fit and, like, look good on the trip. So a lot of time in the airport on the way to the trip, I'll, like, try to eat healthy. Like, Austin has really, really good food choices. And what happens is, like, I'll try to eat healthy and then that will go to shit as soon as I have a drink in the airport. And then yeah. I'll feel bad about it. On the way home, typically I'm hungover. I just want to get home and I'm a bottomless pit. I'll just eat whatever is available to me like at all times. I've started to do a, just a, a fat ass gl- glass of uh, red wine coming back. Yeah, that's a solid it just, move. It just chills me out. Uh, it helps I d- with the anxiety. The worst is when you're flying back on Sunday and you like connect through Dallas Love and you're like, oh shit, I want Chick-fil-A so bad. There's so many options at Love. Like just yeah, Love out, has great drinks. options too. Although, okay. Oh. Chick fil A is closed on Sundays. I swear one time I was there on a Sunday and it was open, but it might have been a Monday. They're bad boys. We both of us got Chick fil A on the way home from uh, LA for my wedding. Yeah, but I was in line with Beto and his son. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have the cojones to uh, approach him for a photo because he was with his son. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was is my claim to fame. That was after your wedding. Yeah. Huh, Will good. and I got a 20, 20 yeah, piece nugget and like ate it in four seconds. I felt like shit. It's, yeah. a easy, it's an easy airport food. Great. It's great food. My go-to snack um, is trail mix, but I do I do like a, a dried fruit nut mix. I don't do like the, the M&M kind. I don't need M&Ms in my, in my trail mix. Um, and just a, you know, one of those $12 smart waters, you know? Yeah. Really like I love spending... <laughs> <laughs> like a million dollars on a smart water. I try if I can to get like actual food rather than like a bag of chips. But I mean, if I have to, I'll get like. Jesus. If it's in the morning, I'm doing breakfast tacos for sure. And yeah. at the Austin Dude, Airport. Is it Hobby or Bush that in Houston that has the Papacitos? That's Hobby. Oh my God. Yeah. Do yeah. breakfast tacos go? Do they? And then we got the Taco Deli here at uh, Bergstrom. And the Salt Lake breakfast tacos oh, are yep. will wreck you. Yeah, they will wreck you. There That's are, a tough way some, to start a trip. There are some options in the Austin Airport for breakfast tacos for sure. Yeah, if if I'm in the morning flying out, I'll get a breakfast taco and probably a coffee, and then on the way home, like it's a fucking free for all. Who knows? I, yeah, the way home is a different story. Will right. and I have stopped at a Buffalo Wild Wings before, just gone after it. A Chili's too. Dude. We've also classed it up and gone to the La Condesa and Dallas Love. Oh yeah, catch right. me at Papacitos. Yeah, and, and uh, either Bush or Hobby. I think it's Hobby. There's a Papa that there's a no, there's no, a Papa Do's in one. Papa Do's is what I'm Papa thinking. Papa Do's, yeah. Papa there's Do's, a, there's is that chicken the strips. That's like the, you go downstairs, maybe from the main like terminal level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that must be a bush because at Hobby they have Papa Cito's and Papa's Brothers burgers. Never had their burgers. They're good. Okay. The chicken tenders are good too. Yes. Remember that? Was that? Remember I sent you all a photo of me just going hard mm-hmm. on the uh, the Papa Do's. Uh, Strips. Yeah, Hobby also has good. a Chick Fil A, okay. and I will go full throttle, like get the full sugar lemonade, like the biggest one Ooh. I can, and then you don't even chicken care at nugs. That point. Yeah, you I just go off. Way home, I just am like, you know what? I probably already gained ten pounds. Let's just do this big, so I can pass out when I get home. Yeah, food's different when you're when you're traveling. Yeah, that always makes me feel disgusting, though. I don't know why. Either way, on the way there, you're not or alone. It does it. Everyone, I think, kind of experiences that. I should like pack a snack for myself, or I just make a cheese board on a plane. That, that works too. Yes, you you have been known to do that. God, yeah, that break trip when we left, I remember people were like getting breakfast tacos. I was like, I'm not eating. We're like about to indulge in a full on cheese board. I can't believe you brought that heavy board with you. I know that was kind of dumb, but got the grandma. It was so good though. Man, worth it. R.I.P. to plain cheese boards. You know, that's right. Damn. No more of those. Oh, yeah. It's it's mask on throughout the entire flight, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can take it down if you're, like, drinking or eating. Right. You can put it back up. Okay. Let's mm-hmm. do another one, Dave. Let's do it. Hey, Dylan. My name is Jake. I'm 29, and I live in Dallas. 
I wanted to reach out because of how honest and open you've been about your divorce. I am recently divorced, December 2019. It was her choice, and I'm trying to figure out my life after this. I feel lost and like I'm just floating through life at this point. I have an excellent job. I've made some friends in a new city and have a loving family, etc. But I just feel like I'm in a rut. I don't know where I want to go in life or what I want to do. I know this healing process is normal, but I was just wondering if you had anything that helped you move forward. Also, I have to say thanks to you, Dave and Will. You guys have been a big part in making me feel better by making me laugh when I'm down. Even though I've never met you, fingers crossed for another Dallas meetup. I feel like you guys are my friends. Keep doing what you're doing. You never know who needs to hear the content goldmine that is circling back and washed media as a whole. Take care, Jake. That last sentence is really why we're doing this question. Um, I don't love answering stuff like this, to be frank, but I always will because I know that some people find it helpful and other people find it interesting. So, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, what he describes is, I mean, I've, I've felt exactly the same way at numerous times since my divorce. Um, it's just it's tough. It's just tough because you have like this thing in your life that's good and, and it's supposed to last forever. And you have all these plans and you see your you see your like a picture of your life in 5, 10, 25 years. And it's it's like it is in the, in the current. And, you know, it's it, it's great and everything's good. And then shit goes south and it falls apart and you got to pick up the pieces and, and figure out what the hell to do next. And it's tough and it's scary and it it sucks. Um but you never know like what life is going to like throw at you. Like no one can predict what's going to happen next year or in five years. And, and a lot of good, some, some shitty things are going to happen, but a lot of good's going to happen too. And you just gotta, I don't know. You gotta just like go, go forward and, and make new positive memories and just see what life throws at you next. Cause my life has been extremely unpredictable. I think I probably speak for most people. Um, career wise, personal relationships wise, family wise, all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's just so unpredictable that you just, what, what's waiting around like the next corner could be amazing. You know, um, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, keep your head up. I know it sucks. Um, embrace it. Don't run from it. Just understand that what you're going through is it's, it's tough. A lot of people go through it. I don't really know what else to say. I think that was a great answer. Well said. Keep your head up. Is it, is it a good listening. answer? I don't really know. I mean, yeah, I mean, what it's else? It's not a bad, yeah, I mean, it's not really our place to say if it's good or bad. I mean, it's just a, it's just truth from you, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, I'm, I'm 36. I have, I'm a single father. I, I don't have, I'm, I'm not in a relationship and like, I, I feel ruddy right now a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, Mercury's in retrograde. Maybe. Is it? I don't know. Will don't tweeted think... something about it last week. I think, I think he, he said, said how he it wished felt it. like it was, but it actually was Oh, my bad. Yeah, I feel like ruddy right now, but, um, you know, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen to me moving forward? Who knows forward? what's around the corner? Who knows what's around the corner? Yeah, it's, life is so unpredictable that uh, you just got to take it as it comes to you a little bit. Agree. Made me think of that Venga Boy song. I, I knew that there was this song in your head when you started when you started bouncing. Just around the corner. Dun, 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 dun. It's also the Six Flags song. <laughs> With the old bald guy, the yeah, old fucking old man in the mask. And look, I know we've said this a million times, and it's very cliche, but like time does heal everything. Like it, it yeah. really will. Like the further you are removed from the situation, the less it's going to sting. I promise you that. So just be patient, and uh, yeah, make make good memories happen for yourself, and just see what happens next. You never know. It could be some great stuff. Speaking of next, what's for dinner? You got any, you don't even know, do you? It actually is going to be Sun Basket. Okay, well, like, I'm, glad. I'm not kidding. I'm glad you said that. I'm cooking salmon tonight, baby. Nice. If you want to skip the grocery store, eat delicious, healthy food without having to go out, get Sun Basket fresh and ready meals deliver delivered to you each week. Not delivered. That would be weird. That's not even a thing. <laughs> I love Sun Basket. This stuff is so quality. Um, they were very gracious. They sent us our own Sun Baskets. I've had a lot of this stuff. It's uh, fresh and ready meals with organic, fresh produce, sustainable seafood. Meats that are free of antibiotics, hormones, and steroids. Their chefs have won Michelin Awards, okay? And a James Beard Award. Hello? Whoa. How many of those do you have? I don't have any. I don't have any. Take the night off and let them cook for you. The meals sound amazing. Okay, yeah, these are amazing. I've had them. The pappardelle. Pasta with wilted spinach, sweet peas, and fresh ricotta. 
Southwestern <laughs> turkey and sweet potato skillet, I've cauliflower, had that one too. mac and Very cheese, good. bro. Korean barbecue chicken lettuce cups. Oh, you don't see that. I got the pork chops with the fig. Uh, I got the boots with the fur. Yeah, and the boots with the fur, the caraway cabbage meat. I didn't even know what that was. All this stuff, man. That's a personal favorite. The spicy Szechuan Dan Dan noodles with tofu and spinach. I didn't even know I liked tofu until I tried Sun Basket. Wow. What'd you get? You, are you doing salmon tacos tonight? I'm doing just... salmon tacos tonight with cabbage slaw, salsa roja. It's red uh, salsa. Right. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. These people are getting hungry. And they're like, well, where can I get some kind of like promo code or what's the deal here? Are you going to hit them? I'm going to hit them with it. Sun Basket is now offering $35 off of your order when you go right now to sunbasket.com slash randy again sunbasket.com slash randy and enter promo code randy at checkout double randy what's well, the only thing better than one randy's two we do have unless, two randy's. unless the second one is a here. human no offense uh that's sunbasket.com slash randy and promo code randy for 35 dollars off of your order check them out could not recommend their stuff more thank you dave thank let's, you Dylan. let's do a little voicemaily Dylan, Sally, Dave, I've got a trash, not trash when it comes to group chat etiquette. Um, I know you guys have covered this before, but we've got one of those high school group chats. There's about eight of us in it. And we recently found out that one of our guys is letting his wife read our thread. Um, now, this thing's a little bit more tame than it used to be because we're all early, early 30s. Um, but we found out because she told my wife in passing or asked her, Said, have you ever read the guy's group chat? To which my wife said, no, there's no way I want to see what those idiots are talking about, <laughs> which is fair enough. Um, but we all have called him out on it, thinking it's a trash move because, in our opinion, everything we say in the group chat is said in confidence. Um, so is he trash? I can't really imagine being uh, swayed otherwise. I'll sit back and listen. Not great sound quality there, but we got through it. I thought that was the trash or not trash. <laughs> Have we done this guy's question before? We have it's, done a similar, one? similar to this, yeah. Okay. It's trash. Don't, you, it's yeah. not a good move. I mean, you, there's a reason why you text the squad. Right. Right? Because that, that's what you want to read it. And you say, you know, you say it's locker room talk, not, you know, not egregious locker room talk, like like Trump, under Trump's definition. But Hey, um, bro, we don't do politics. <laughs> it's not politics. That's his term. But you say stuff that you, you don't want significant others to read. Yeah. And it's trash to um, to show them without consent from the squad. I agree, I'm and I'm have a uh, I've admitted in the past to reading Will's texts. You have, yeah. And I will admit, as a girl, it's almost like interesting. You're like, what are they, what are they talking? Like, what are they talking about? And then you get on there, and you're like, oh, it's just like forty five minutes of like sports talk that I don't give a shit about, like. I, yeah, like, that's all we're doing is talking sports yep, in there, right, Dave? Nothing, nothing more. <laughs> no, but like I, I have been curious in the past. I'm like, what? Like, how are this many people on a text texting about shit constantly? But then I remember, like, I have a group to act like text with all my college friends, and I think there's nothing in there that would be bad. That if Will read, he would be like, oh. But at the same time, like, it's their privacy. Like, we talk about right. personal stuff. Like, yeah, there's nothing like incriminating our health and things like there. that that you maybe don't want, like. When you're texting in a group thread, like ours, my most active one is like me and four other college friends. And it'll just like pick up randomly and then we'll go like full throttle for like three hours and then it'll like die down again. And I think the – there's like an implied consent when you are in a group text that you're like saying like and everyone else and my secrets are kept by this group, you know. And not that we're saying anything like monumental but – we're talking about health. We're talking about like someone's spouse is being annoying. We're talking about some girl we all think is like going too hard on Instagram. And maybe we don't want like, because exactly what this guy said, like that guy's wife read it and then said something to this dude's wife. Like that's what you don't want to happen because you don't yeah. want your thoughts that you would never tell anybody else to like become something. Yeah. And there's nothing like you said, there's nothing like too terrible in these text groups. Like there's nothing incriminating, like I said, but I don't think I would want, like, to hand my phone over to you to read any conversation in my phone. Right. Even there's nothing bad in there, but it's just like, it's just private, and, and it's in on some level it's embarrassing. Like, oh, this is what Dylan says to this person and this person right. and this person. Nothing bad, but it's like I don't want you to read it because that's right. my shit. And I think, like, 
you also run the risk. This guy, like the guy who showed his wife, like the wife, you always, if you're the one snooping, like I've said this before, you're the one who's, you can't be offended if someone says something that maybe isn't, doesn't sit well with you. And so maybe this guy isn't saying anything stupid, but maybe like the guy whose wife is reading it, maybe he's not saying anything stupid, but maybe one of the friends is like kind of acting up and you don't want that friend that maybe is being a little more like rambunctious in the text, his wife to find out, you know, like, and he's not meaning anything by it yeah. most of the time. Like, I feel like if any of y'all were in a group text, I know y'all are in any sort of group text. And like some, one of the guys was just like being blatantly disrespectful or like admits to cheating on his wife or some shit. Like that's probably going to go past the group text. Cause y'all are like, morally sound people who will say something to him at least and be like that's not cool you need to think about that but most of the shit y'all are talking about like i don't care about yeah you know yeah i this is trash and it's trash they need to tell their friend like we're gonna kick you out yeah exactly that that's that's the price you pay that's the consequence of this and if you don't if you don't shape up right and you maybe give them a warning give them a warning but be like if you do it again you're, you're out you're out you're out and once you, once you leave the squad text, you're not coming back. It's it's tough. It's tough to get it's back. It's over. In. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we covered that. Yeah. Let's do the next one, Dave. Hey. So after college, I took a full time job in my college town, and on the side, I was a fraternity house mom. Frat. This was two weeks after I graduated, fresh out of a sorority, former frat sweetheart, and a twenty two at twenty two, I moved in with sixty five guys. Guys, hashtag TSM. To be honest, it was a really fun time. I did it for a year and moved on with life. Flash forward five years in a different city. We're all adults and I'm still great friends with some of the guys. We have this ongoing bit where they call me mom and make jokes whenever we are together in a text and on social media. Well, these guys are a major part of my life. So when I'm dating a new guy, I try to give the potential boyfriend Heads up before they meet each other, but often the guys I date are weirded out by the fact that I lived in a frat or by how many guys I'm friends with. When I bring them around, the boys make dad jokes. It's funny because we are all the same age, but yeah, I get it's a lot to take in. How do I explain to the guys I date that this is just a chill, funny situation? We didn't have this at our school. No, You're not house um, moms. I know that some. I know that some schools, probably bigger schools. Yeah, and I think it's bigger in the southeast to Texas have a house mom. Sororities at least had house moms. Sororities are yeah, they, they do this all the time, but fraternities not so much. I'm trying to think like I think all the fraternities at Texas, and I could be wrong, but while I was there, I don't think they had house moms so much as they had like a house boy or something that like I, I guess they called him a house boy, house but like boy. had like you know did all their cleaning like did the cleaning of the house yeah. and like coordinated stuff but maybe didn't like live house there house manager type house manager is the word i was okay. looking for that was like most of the time a guy because the fraternity guys that i knew like i don't know how this was where she went to school but like i don't think that the fraternity guys that i grew up with or that i knew would respect a girl that lived with him very much you know what i'm saying it I don't like they be, were, I don't they were sound, shitheads when look, we were in college. I don't want to sound as sensitive, but it's just it's a weird dynamic to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Most house moms, I think, are older women, mm -hmm. right? So to to put a twenty two year old girl in a house with sixty five frat guys who are eighteen to twenty two, who are eighteen to twenty two, is a really interesting move. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not suggesting anything is going on. Like I'm not. So don't 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 get me wrong. Right. It's just a, an interesting dynamic to me. And and tough to explain to someone you're trying to date. I like totally I, I, get it. I see it. I, I get it. Um, I don't I don't really know what to tell her here. I don't either because I I don't want to come across as judgmental, and I know that I am, and that's not what I'm trying to do. I am thinking about the guys that I knew in college, and they were all shitheads. Like, and up until we were probably like. Most of us were married. Yeah, you know this what is I'm more saying? an indictment on the guys than it is exactly. her. Like, guys are just, at, at that Stupid. age especially, are scumbags. Yeah. I mean, let, let's, they are. And I'm not saying that they're, like, you know, going to harass her or stuff like that. I'm just saying, like, they're just assholes and shitheads and they're constantly And they drunk think everything's and, funny. Yeah. And so my only probably thing that I would say is, like, if you're going to date someone seriously, I would probably wait on introducing him 
to some of these guys that are your friends because unless you are comfortable having a conversation with those friends saying like, hey, it weirds guys out and I'd like you to stop calling me mom, you know, like. And this is five years later. So she's now 27. Right. So talking about five years prior is when she lived with the guys. So to still be friends with these guys. Well, that's great. That's great that she made friends and that, but I also feel like maybe at 27, these guys like still having the like frat mom joke, like joke is like, they, they need to grow up a little bit. Well, and they're all wondering the one thing, like, did you hook up with any of these guys? Yeah. And the the guys that she's that, bringing That's around. the underlying Yeah, that's what they're, here, that's, yeah. and then like, because, you know, it's always, when you meet the college friends, no matter what, you're always kind of like, okay, cool. You, you don't really like it when someone has inside jokes with your significant other that you're not in on. Right. It's just an insecurity. I think most people have it. You get over it, but like, with like all these guys that you're still close with, like I, that's tough, but I think if you just kind of get out in front of it and be like, "Yeah, these are my, you know, these are my buddies. My, we have a, we have a little ongoing joke." Yeah, and like it's probably a good thing that you still have a good relationship with a lot of them. Is this a paid role? I think so. She said it was a part. Well, you job. well, but she also probably got to live there for free. You know, she said she had a, a full time job and on the side I was a fraternity house mom. So like a lot like. So At Texas, the house housing. moms, yeah, lived in like a little like apartment situation, right? That was connected to the house or like a, like a. So she just studio. had a room in the house that was yeah. hers. So that I feel bad because I think that she's probably getting unfairly judged by potential significant others or boyfriends or whatever by the fact that she lived with all these guys. But I think that that unfortunately is probably going to continue to exist. Like think about. If you were trying to date a guy and he was like, I'm talking to the girl here, this girl was trying to date a guy and he's like, all my, I have 10 best friends. They're all girls. Yeah. Like people get weirded out by that stuff. And that's our own like conditioning as humans and the way we were brought up. And most people don't find like having only friends of the opposite sex, like super kosher. Like uh, you can say this all you want, but like girls who say like, I'm only friends with guys. I just never get along with girls. Other girls will judge her for that. Oh, for sure. Which may be true. And like maybe she gets along better with guys. But like girls are judgmental people. Guys are judgmental people. I mean, everyone's judgmental. So unfortunately, I think you either need to talk to your friends and be like, hey, can we cool it on the mom talk? Or like, you know, I don't want anybody that I potentially bring around to be like thinking that there's something between her and the guy she lived with definitely don't, don't let them call you mom yeah mommy. <laughs> i don't know if they were doing that but that, and don't call them mommy is <laughs> yeah it's, she's yeah she said they called they still call her mom and the fact that they're calling like potential boyfriend's dad is a little intense. yeah i'd be like guys we're, we're the same age let's let's cut that but you have to she has to look at it from a standpoint of like the guy she's bringing around that's intimidating to like come around and there's maybe five guys there that have been friends with this girl for like however many at least five years and she lived with them. That's a weird dynamic to enter. Like on the flip side, think about if you were entering and the guy that you wanted to date had five girlfriends that were friends that were girls that were like all sitting there, you would feel pretty intimidated. So I'm not yeah. surprised. Yeah, it just takes, it takes. Um, but maybe the guy that she's going to end up with is going to be totally chill with this. Look, and it takes some trust, obviously. Yeah. But it, you have to just explain it, explain the situation and, and be totally honest. And you have nothing to hide. That's great. And if a guy totally has a problem honest. with it, then he's probably not worth it. Yeah. He can't handle if, it. If he has an ounce of insecurity to him, it's going to be right. tough. Yeah. You got to find a confident dude. And he probably does because he's a guy. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. All right. We got one more. Let's I'm excited it for this. This one's a little bit more lighthearted. What's up, mailing crew? Uh, so these past few months, I've been getting out to these games. And uh, my waist has been getting smaller. However, my thighs have been bulking up to a to a place I've never seen before in my life. So the issue I'm facing is that all my shorts are fit around my waist pretty well, but they are super tight on my thighs. So I don't know if y'all have any recommendations. Should I just embrace the skin tight shorts on my thighs and have them fit my waist, or should I just cinch the belt down as far as it goes and just wear some baggy ass shorts for the time being? Any brand recommendations would be awesome too. Thanks, y'all. 
you two both just nodding your head I'm, right now. Like, I'm just I'm almost speechless I'm at, at, at this. I, uh, I wish I had this. Wait, problem. why are you speechless? Because he, he's he's just he's just flexing about the gains. He's, <laughs> like <laughs> first of all, to gain mass in your thighs, like that's not easy to do. I mean, okay, I want to say this. I can't. I, I'm I on freaking... record saying I can't do it commiserate with this guy because the exact same thing is happening to me right now in the peloton <laughs> like hey good for you my ass and thighs are getting massive and my waist is like maybe the same a little bit smaller okay, but i can't hourglass sally i can't fit into any of my jeans anymore yeah it's, he's also asking two guys who don't <laughs> who just don't have this problem yeah. like we're never gonna have he this needs problem to ask now. yeah ask yeah go up to a meathead at the gym and be like dude what do you do about your shorts man you he just, said all of his shorts fit you gotta do the, the thing where now. you cut the little slit in the side yeah so it kind of opens up down there um or man uh, hop on get some bird dog shorts dude i i could i could squat for two hours every day for the next five years and i'm gonna see just moderate bulking in my thighs very moderate um i just i just don't have it it's just not in my genetic makeup to have big thighs. Does and I've bird do it. Are bird dogs workout shorts? Do they have a drawstring? I'm trying to yes, think of yes. what wills are. Yeah, I think that's great. Because you want something with the drawstring so you can cinch it on your waist. I mean, this is for purely working out, right? But I guess yeah. the other thing to do would be to buy shorts. Like if you want regular shorts, maybe some golf shorts or like something you would wear out. Buy them a size like what fits your thigh and then you need to go get them tailored to your waist probably. My waist is getting smaller and my thighs are just because massive. nothing i think i think the belt cinching where the shorts are way too big but you have a belt keeping them on is not a great look like no uh, that's, nobody's that's wearing a belts terrible in 2020 look. anyway you gotta you gotta <laughs> go get your clothes tailored to your body like that's number one you gotta do that i've honestly never heard of anyone getting shorts tailored ever uh i, I do shorts tailored. will does what we'll get some hemmed yeah hemmed and then uh, honestly that's will different than getting tailored though no you can get them taken in like mm -hmm. Okay, you've never gone to someone who like measures your waist, measures your thighs, and then gets you shorts that fit you. Like I've never heard yeah, of that. Yeah, I've never. What I'm I wonder if like when you go, if you go to like Lulu and buy I've, shorts. I've, I've had shorts brought. I've had them like yeah. that because I no, get but all those jeans and shorts. Like this is pretty common is to buy something that fits at least for women to buy something that fits your hips and butt and thighs, and then maybe it's small. It's maybe it's too big in the waist, and you just go get it pinched in. Okay. Hello, maybe, Kim Kardashian. You maybe, don't think they make pants like that? Like they're not making pants that fit that kind of hourglass. I've never thought about where Kim Kardashian buys her her jeans, she, but I, I assume it's it's hard to find. They probably fit her. Yeah, well now I, they're probably sense. custom made. But. Probably Jinko. She wears Jinkos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just never heard of a guy getting shorts like actually tailored to their body. But yeah, it, I'm sure. Will Will have some, some cases shorts that need to be taken in. Yeah. in the waist right now. Look, it's a good, it's a good problem to have. I I mean. I, I totally get it, dude. I have the same yeah. thing going on, and it's not something I want. Back so. in like my early twenties, when I was just out of shape, I was like two, probably like two hundred five, two ten, but it just like it was bad weight. That's when I bought like the majority of my suits because I was like applying for jobs and yeah. my friends were getting married, that kind of stuff. And then I lost a bunch of weight. I got down to like one seventy five, one eighty, and my I had six suits and none of them fit me. It yeah. was a joke. I was like, what do I do now? And I go out and buy new suits. Yeah, I mean, tailoring is great, especially if you're not going to, like, fluctuate in your weight, but sometimes it's it's better just get new shit. Yeah. Because it's going to cost so much to get some Yeah, tailored. it's not like shorts are expensive. Yeah. Um, look, good problem to have. I'm happy that you are you so easily are gaining mass in your thighs because I just don't have that Congratulations. Energy. I think yeah, he needs to get nice. some drawstring shorts for the gym. And maybe but there are, there are also draw like – Actually, the shorts I'm wearing right now are khaki shorts, but they're drawstring waist, and I love them. Yeah, we'll have some like that too. Yeah. Another thing is you got to look at cut. Like when you're buying shorts, and this is a little bit easier to do in person, but it's probably easier to buy something that's a little shorter than like a 10 inch, you know, yeah, inseam or something. Like a five or a seven is probably <clears throat> going to do better because like you don't want basically like Bermuda shorts on. Yeah. And if you like look, and the waist is like in, and then the shorts kind of go out. Yeah. That kind of helps you too if your thighs are so bulky that your short shorts kind of like hitched up on your like you get stuck on your the thickness of your thigh mm -hmm. i think girls are kind of they kind of dig that because it's like oh this, this or you could go thick. do exactly what i did the which is basically boy. change all my shorts to bike shorts they're all spandex now because <laughs> <laughs> i can't fit regular shorts it's really sad wow look at you it's getting the difficult pelly's paying off huh no it's not that's not what i didn't want gains in my thighs you don't want to you didn't i want just that. wanted loss everywhere Okay. No gains. Okay. Maybe my arms. Maybe Madonna arms. But that hasn't <laughs> happened either. 
Man, good problem to have. I don't I don't feel bad for this guy. Yeah, you both were just shaking your head like out of jealousy. It's, it's cuz he's a, he's asking yeah. me and Dave and that's just funny. Like if if Mike was in here, it would he might be able to help a little bit. Yeah, maybe Mike can but, help I mean, out. I mean, I don't think I'm offending Dave. Like we're just not big leg guys. We never will we're be. We're just not. We're just not. Yeah. Anyway. Like, um that that wraps her up. Do you guys have fun? I had a great time. That was a, little, that was a good one. It was a yeah. fun. We got serious and we got fun with it. Look, we answer what they ask us. That's kind of the deal here, right? Yep. Whatever they whatever they throw at us, we gotta we gotta hit it. You Any bonus saying? questions? <sighs> Not, I, don't, I won't lie, I don't have one this week. That's okay. I, we had a jam I've been episode. working the three to eleven shift and I'm just you very tired. You're exhausted. Well, thanks for I'm showing gonna, up. I'm and... going to think of one today, though, for okay. next week. Great. Uh, the hotline number, once again, is 888-362-6245. And if you'd like to write in, do so at the link in the Twitter bio, at Mail Podcast. All topics are on the table. We'll talk to you next week. Goodbye.